Yesterday, Joe, I was sharing with you about God needing witnesses. And also the devil also needs witnesses. And both of them are looking at man to be their witness. And it is how we make our choices that we are either God's witnesses or Satan is witnesses. Let me just give you one scripture and there are so many all over the Bible. But let me give you one that emphasizes the point we were making yesterday. One of the things I wanted to make clear is that many people have a wrong concept of what it means to be a witness for Jesus. They understand it as being I mean, going out to tell people that Jesus loves them, Jesus died for them, they should give their lives to Jesus. But I was trying to show you that the concept of being a witness for God did not start only after the gospel came. It's from way back in the beginning. And God wanted people who would stand and show the world that he is God. And he who would show that he is a God who is glorious. Who is loving. Who is just. And who is all in all. And that besides him there is no other God and there shall never be any other God. On the contrary, Satan also wants witnesses. Witnesses that will prove to the world that God is not God. That God is not loving. That God is not glorious. That God is not just. That his word is impossible. That it is impossible to obey him. And when he can convince anybody who loves God especially to compromise on the word with the argument that it is too hard that it is impossible he has won a witness and that witness he can use to say to God you are not just you judged us fallen angels for not keeping your word. But your word is impossible. Here is the witness. He loves you. He is called by your name. But he also affirms that your word is impossible. When Christians understand that, we would never allow ourselves to be compromised. To simply say, oh, God understands. Oh, that, that word is too hard. Because that's exactly what the devil is looking for. And when we succumb to it, we become his witnesses. On that day, he will bring us up. He says, even your son, so and so, affirms it that your word is impossible. It's impossible to obey you. He loves you. He's called by your name. But he could not do it either. Do you remember the picture painted in the book of Zechariah? When Joshua stood before the throne of God. And the devil came to accuse him. And God had to rebuke him. That picture is true of all situations. So let us read in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 43. Verse 
verse 1. And I want you to pay attention not just to the words but to the spirit behind the words. Think of God who is speaking these words and what his desire is. Hallelujah. Amen. But now thus says the Lord who created you O Jacob and he who formed you O Israel. Mm. Fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. Mm. You are mine. When you pass through the waters I'll be with you. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overthrow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt, nor shall the flame scorch you. Tejiri kusanya awo. Bono itanga muliro. Tegu kuo chenga. Enemi zo muliro. Teziri kuo cha. For I am the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel. Your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom. Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Kumanga nzemu kama katonda wo. Katonda wo mtuku vwa isira hili. Omuloko zuo. Na wayo misiri. Gwoso wolo kutebwa. Since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored. I have loved you. Therefore, I will give men for you and people for your life. Kumangoli wa muendo jendi, owe chitibwa, era kubanga nkwagala, ndi wayaba sajja kululuo, mpeyo na abantu, kuruobula mubuo. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Totia kubanga nzendi na awe. Ndile teza dedio kufebu vanjwa. Eran kunganyo kufebu guanjwa. Ndiga mbobu chiko wa kononti. Wayo bolina. Nobu chiko wa donti. Toba gani da. Leta bataba niba ngo kufe wala. Niba wala ba ngo kufa kumkomera riyensi. Everyone who is called by my name. Whom I have created for my glory. I have formed him. Yes. I have made him. Buli muntuye na itiwe linyari ange. Gwen natondo rechiti wacha ange. Gwen nakora. Gwen natonda. Bring out the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us the former things? Let them bring out their witnesses that they may be justified. Furumi ababalina masuna inga tebalaba. Abali na matu na inga teba ulira. Ama wanga gonaga kungane na haba antubaje. Ane kuwo. E yali ayo gede kubi intubi no. Ane kuwe yali ala angiri debi ali uo. Leka bale taba juli zi. Oku kakasanti bali batufu. Aba ulira. Bagamenti. Dalabo chiri. Do you hear the, the sound of his voice? Oh uli e dobo zi diye. He is arguing a point. Aline songa jaja yo. He says. Let them come. Let them prove it. Let them tell us, have they, has there ever been something like this? Let them bring their witnesses. He's telling the world because the, the devil also has his witnesses. Then he goes on. Oh, let them hear and say it is truth. You are my witnesses, says the Lord. And my servants whom I have chosen. That you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he. Mm. Before me there was no God formed. Nor shall there be after me. 
Leka baleta ba juli zoka kasa nti baadhi ba tuufa ba wudi da ba government dala bochiri. Muri ba juli ruaba angewe bwa yogera mukama. Omuere zao angewe na ronda. Muri yoke mu manye. Muzi kiri zee. Mutegere nganze uyo. Tewari katonda yansoka. Era tewari ba katonda alinzidi dida. Nze nze muwe nze mukama. O kujia konze. Tewari Do you hear that? Obi wudi debio. Hallelujah. The Amen. issue is not about your doing this or you are doing that. The issue is between him and Satan. God wants proof that he is God and there is no any other besides him. And he says, you are my witness. The role of a witness is to bring proof to bring testimony to bring evidence now listen he says you are my witnesses says the lord and my servant whom i have chosen now why did he choose that you may know and believe me do you remember where we started yesterday? That people who know their God shall be strong. And this is life eternal. To know him, the only one and true God. And he says, I chose you that you may know me and believe me. Before you go preaching, before you go telling everybody God loves you, you must show that you know him and you believe him. When you believe him, you don't defy what he says. You don't think that what he says is impossible. You don't think that it's not right. You know that whatever he says, that is truth. That's what it means to be a witness for God. Now continue, he says. Before me. No, he says that you may know and believe me. And understand that I am he. The devil may say that I'm not God. But I want you to know that I am he. I want you to be still and know that I'm God. Brother, sister, that's what it means to be a witness for God. It's not so much about talking about Jesus. That comes later. But what you are inside of you, your relationship with God, that's what really matters. And he goes on to say, Before me, there was no God for me. Mm -mm. uh -uh. There was no God before me. Nor shall there be after me. I even I am the Lord. Do you hear the case in court? Do you hear what you are being called to hear what you are being called to witness? We are living in a generation today when the world wants to make God an outdated idea. In the last days, Jesus said, you will be hated by all nations because of me. We are seeing nations progressively legislating against God. We are seeing entertainment and media treating God as a ridiculous idea. We are hearing people being ashamed of confirming to the world that they belong to him. And Christians are becoming very wise to express themselves without revealing that they belong to God. The whole issue of being witnesses is about this. 
And the world wants to silence us. And the world wants to make us ashamed of him. Do you remember Jesus said, when you are ashamed of me before the world, I will be ashamed of you before my father. What we are talking about here is reality. Now we let us go on. I have declared and I have saved. Mm. I have proclaimed and there was no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses. Nze naleto kole sewa nenangirira nendokola. Nze sosi katonda mulala mugwira mumwe muli bajulirwa abange bwayogera mukama. You are my witnesses says the Lord that I am God. Muli bajulirwa abange bwayogera mukama. Amen. Do you know what that means? Remember those young men, three young men in Babylon. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They were told to bow down to worship an idol. And they said, O king, we respect you. But let it be known. As to bow down to that idol, we shall never do that. If you choose to throw us in the fire, our God is able to save us. But even if he chooses not to, let it be clear, we will never bow down to another God. Those were witnesses. Those were witnesses. When the government made a law that no one should pray to any other God except to the, to the king. Daniel said, Daniel that doesn't apply to me. To me, there is only one God. If it means dying, for him it is worthy. And he prayed and he was taken and thrown in the lion's den. Brother, sister, being a witness, now listen to this, it's not so much a talk business, it's a walk business. It's how you walk and how you stand. And it takes the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us continue. But listen, I told you, don't just listen to the words. Listen to the spirit of the one who is speaking. And he says, Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was, I am he. And there's no one who can deliver out of my hand. Mm. I work, and who will reverse it? We wow, kuva kuna kwezid, nzinzuyo. Tewani no ma inzo kunyo muntu mukono gwange, chienkora, anya inzo kuchichu sa. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, O Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I was sent to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives. The Chaldeans will rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Buati wa yogera mukama. O mnono zwa mumuto kuvua Israeli. Nti kuwa mwe, nde tu mje Babylon. Nde tera be Babylon ibo nanga ba wambi. Mubiombo ebi abe wanya. Nze mukama mumuto kuvua mwe. O mnono zwa Israeli kabaka wa mwe. Buati wa yogera mukama oye ya kure kuvu mnyanja. No rugudo mumazamaji. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, brother, sister. If there is only one thing you pick out of this Africa, the heart of spiritual warfare is not about what you do or what happens to you. It's about what happens to the name of the Lord. The devil wants to 
defy and dispute that he is God. Sitana yagalo kuwa kanya no kujungulu la mazimanti mukama ye katonda. And God is saying that is what I'm fighting for. Mukama agambe chiche chinwa nyisi. Do you remember in the book of Isaiah 45? Ojukira mshabu cha Isaiah na mutano. He made a vow. Ye yama. He said. Na agamba. I am the Lord. Tinzi mukama. That is my name. Ero liyeli nyari ange. I have sworn. Nera yiride. By myself. Nera yiride. That every knee shall bow. Chukuri vivi. And every tongue shall confess. Na vulimi ruatule. That I am the Lord. Tinzi mukama. That is the heart of the warfare. In every situation, when you are struggling to make a decision, ask yourself, what will show that he is God? And stand for that. Be a witness that he is God. And besides him, there is no any other. When we start doing that, brother, there are many things that we have been doing we will never do again. There are many things we've been allowing to happen will never happen again. Even there are many conversations we have been listening to which we will not allow to be spoken in our presence again. When somebody starts to speak like that, you say, uh, uh, I'm going to wange. For the sake of my God, I don't want to listen to that. If you want to talk about that, go somewhere else, not in my presence. But I will not tolerate anything that defies the name of my father. Beloved, when you adapt this mindset, it changes everything about you. Let us continue. Verse 18. Do not remember the former things. No consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Mwela bide biema bega, sote muloza kubiaita. Labankole chintwe chijia kakano. Chita andeso kulabika. Temu chiraba. Nkuro rugudo mudungu. Nende teme gamurukora. Because the, the beasts of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostriches. Because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people, my chosen. And so let's almost say, because this is somewhere to tell you. Ebi ven ebi wuguru. Kuwanga. Nzenga ba mazimodongo. Nemi gamurukora. Okunye sava antu bange. Habaronde bange. You know, do you remember when Jesus was on the back of a donkey going to Jerusalem and the people were shouting Hosanna to he who comes in the name of the Lord and the Pharisees said silence the people stop them saying what they are saying and Jesus said if they keep quiet the stones will shout now I want to tell you something. Do you hear what the Lord says? If you will not honor me and treat me as God, the jackals will honor me. The wild beasts will honor me. It's up to you. Make a choice. If you will not treat him as God, the animals will treat him as God. The birds will honor him. They will thank him for the water he provides. Ask your neighbor, what's your choice? Come on. If mm. they are not looking at you, touch them. Say, what's your choice, sister? Are you going to honor God as God? Verse 21 says, These people I have formed for myself, mm. they shall declare my praise. Now listen to verse 25. This is so beautiful. He says, I, even I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. Do you hear that? When you come to say, Lord, forgive me, 
He says, Agamba. I am the one Nze. who takes away your sins. Nze and I do it, I do it for my sake. I do it for my sake. That you may go so and show the world that I am God. Amen. 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 If we understand these things, we wouldn't be confessing and going back to sin and confessing and going back to sin. Because that's not the purpose why he forgives us. He forgives us for his sake. That we may be a witness to the entire world. The Bible says the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. Are we together? So having connected with the flow of yesterday as we were unfolding, I want now to move to another element. What is it that makes it so hard for us to honor God as God. If we want to be true witnesses, what is it we must deal with that we may overcome all resistance? Are you with me? Are you with me? Can I teach you how to say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Please pay attention to this point. Because it is one many people never think about. Let us go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28. And we shall read from verse 11. God was talking about Lucifer. And these are, these are the words he said about Lucifer. Moreover, son of, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, You were the seal of perfection full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire and the turquoise and the emerald with gold. The workmanship of your tim timbers and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Mm. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the days when they were created until iniquity was found in you. <laughs> Kungu bagira kaba kawe tulo, mtege zenti watu wa yogira mkama katonda anti, go wali echi okula bila kechi tukiri dengo judama gezi, era watu nga watu kiri amburonji, wali muade na nemiro ya katonda, buli jinja liyo muendo nga liku wikako, sadio, topazi, alimansi, beruro, sokamu, yasepi, safiro, e jinja ilia na wandagala, okuteke wateke wako nevi kunyueza bia kule wa muzabu, era kuruna kule watonde wa, bia tegeke wa, wali kerubi wa mkumi afriwa waka mafuta, na kwa ula, wansongeyo, Waberanga kurusoso lutu kufuru waka tonda. Nota ambulia wakati mainji ya gomo lilo. Te wali kocha kunenyeza wacho na okufa kuna kule watuonde wa. Okutusa utalibu tu ukirifu. Lwe wala bikira mugwe. 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with the violence, with violence within. And you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering sheriff from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I 
cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. Mubi korabi ebinji wa jure mpise mbi. Ira na okore ebibi. Chena vangu goba kutusoziru wa katonda. Nobu suavo unji. Nenku goba kwe kerube ya kuma ngokuwa mainja gomorilo. Omutima kwa gwari na malala uroburu unji wo. Newe limba limba urechiti wacho. Chena vangu kanyuga kuonsi. Nenku fule choku sekere wa maso gaba kabaka. Praise the Lord. Now listen brothers and sisters. There are two statements here that God made about Lucifer. In the beginning he said to him. You were full of wisdom. What does it mean to be full of wisdom? And we are talking about God's wisdom. Not the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of God is the way God sees things. The way God understands things. The way God considers things right or wrong. So when God says to Lucifer, you were full of wisdom. He is literally saying, your thinking was in alignment with mine. The way you understood things was exactly my way. You accepted what I called right. Good. And proper. You were perfect. But in verse 17, he says, you corrupted your wisdom. What does it mean to corrupt your wisdom? It is to adapt a way of thinking that is different from God's way of thinking. Seeing things Contrary to the way God sees them. Calling things what God does not call them. Considering things God calls good as though they are not good. Considering things God calls evil as though they are good. If you were to take time and meditate on this, that is the root of all sins. That's the beginning of all sin. What, goes, what God calls right, you call wrong. What God calls wrong, you call right. And the next thing is you are going to find ways of justifying it. What God, call, what God calls evil, you think, but that's not really bad. I don't see what's wrong with that. The moment you start dealing with God like that, you have already taken the step towards sinning. There's no way we can corrupt our wisdom and continue to please God. And when you talk about wisdom, we are talking about our thought flow. Our attitude. Our, the way we look at things. And God says, adapt my way. <laughs> and the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53 <laughs> that all of us like lost sheep are strayed away in our own ways. And when he came, he said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. We cannot have our way and his way. His way is his, his, his wisdom. Our way is wisdom. Are you with me? Are you with me? I, I can talk of, about this for hours because it's such a mystery. It's such a deceptive mystery. But let me just use scriptures. And I want to show you the, the weight of what I'm trying to share with you. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, from verse 1, let us read. Now the serpent was cunning 
more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the trees of the garden, but of the tree of the fruit which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Kale no msota gwali mukala bakala bokuchire nsolo zonezo omunsiko mukama katonda ze yatonda ne kugambo mukazi nti kazi katonda yagama nte mulyanga kumutegwa nogo omunemiro omukazi nadamu omusota nti tuli akobuli mutyo gwo omunemiro chokka katonda yatulagira nte mulyanga kuchibala cho muti oguli wakati mu nimiro wadogu kwa atako mulemo kufa na look at this with me please we said wisdom is to think like God thinks and to see things as God sees them and to take them as he takes them. Do you hear the woman? What is what wisdom is she operating from? It's the wisdom of God. He says no. We can eat of all the trees. Except the one in the midst of the garden. That one we are not supposed to eat. No no even touch. Otherwise we shall die. Her mindset. Is in alignment with God's mindset. She is repeating and speaking what God would say. Then the devil said. You shall not surely die. Now, whose wisdom is that? Don't discourage me. Whose wisdom is speaking now? That is Satan's wisdom. It is called corrupt wisdom. Everybody say with me, corrupt wisdom. There is divine wisdom and there is corrupt wisdom. God says when you eat, when you touch, you will die. Another wisdom says, no, you will not die. Already, you are facing rebellion. You are facing sin. It goes on to say, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Now now listen to the next verse. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Hey, hey, hey. Since when? God says you eat it, you die. Now the woman is saying the tree is good for food. Which wisdom is she now operating from? Corrupt wisdom. Say it aloud. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of, the, of his fruits and ate. Did you hear that? The tree is going to bring her wisdom. Make her wise. At first she was in God's wisdom. Now she wants to get something else. Also called wisdom. But not God's wisdom. What is that called? Corrupt wisdom. Brother, sister. That is the root of all sins. From that moment, when both 
Women and men were no longer seeing things as God sees them. They were no longer thinking the way God thinks. They had now been programmed to do everything wrong. Let me show you another scripture. In the book of Romans, chapter 1. I am praying that the Holy Spirit will emphasize this in your heart. You and I can never be faithful witnesses until we deal with this issue. Until we deal with this issue, we can never be true witnesses. Verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Even as they didn't want to retain God in their thought process. They did not want to stay aligned with God's way of thinking. So when they made that choice, God gave them over. To what? The Bible, the, the word here is debased mind. Other versions say reprobate mind. Other versions say corrupt mind. What is it God gave them over to? Corrupt wisdom. And what, what does corrupt wisdom do? Listen. He gave them over to a corrupt mind to do the things which are not fitting. Like being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, Proud, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. That is what corrupt wisdom does. Once we are given over to a corrupt mind. All these things simply flow through us. Do you remember when Paul said, What I want to do is not what I do. And what I hate is what I do. In my inner self, I love the word of God. And I want to do it. But in my flesh, I am a captive. And many, many of us are like that. We love God genuinely. And we love righteousness genuinely. But we don't know why. Righteousness simply runs away from us. What we want to do is not what we do. What we hate is what we do. What we are ashamed of is what we end up with. We are not proud of it. We don't like it. We even hide it. And yet we don't know how to be free. There is no determination that will set anybody free until we deal with corrupt wisdom. Amen. Amen. Listen to verse 32. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, 
but not only do the same but also approve of those who practice them Ne wankubadenga ba manyenga katonda ya gama anti abanta bako le mintu ngevi wali zikiriziwa. Tebako makubiko la kuka na ye basima na ababikora. Hallelujah. That's talking about us who are believers. Awa yogira kufabalo kore. We know what is evil. We know what will be judged by God. We know what leads to death. We know what leads to death. And he says, but they not only keep on doing the same, they even encourage others to do the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I want to take you to another scripture. Matthew 25, verse 1. Again, I want to emphasize. This is where all rebellion and sin comes from. Let us go to the book of James. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let us go to James chapter 3. Verse 13. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Anyari na magazi na kutege na mumwe. Kale, abiragire nga mpisa ze nonji, nga kore ebi kore ebi oboto waze, ebi amagezi. Of what? Meekness of wisdom. Amagezi ago oboto waze. It's only out of that that we can live in good conduct. Okuva mweche woka, yengali uchinzo kutambuli ya mpisa ze guana. Now listen, verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Bumuba no mutimo muchai, or good you de no buja, iranga mwefa komweka, temusana de kwe wanana kurimbanga mukwantana na mazima, kuwanga, a magazing gago te gaveri katonda muguru wabura, ga kunsi, era, siga muoyo, wazira, gasitani. Do you hear that? Are you ready, Brother, sister, the Holy Spirit wants to show us how we can stand and live victorious. Before you do, I bind you. I cast you out. <laughs> the first warfare is here. In our mindset. And all evil acts come out of a wisdom that comes from not from above. It comes from the world. It's worldly wisdom. It is sensual. It is of the flesh. And it's demonic. It's of Satan. Today you and I can now zero down. And say where do I start this walk? How do I start this new walk? It starts with a, a call to deal with our wisdom. Verse 17 then says. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Then peaceable, then gentle, then willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Nayama geza gava muguru, okuso kabio na marongofu, eraga mirembe, gafayo kubantu abalala, maurize, gadju dokusasira, nebi barebi runji, tegaso sola mubantu, era sigma namfusi. Amen. Amen. I said earlier that many people never even think about this element of 
our wisdom. And yet see how much is dependent on wisdom. Which wisdom are you operating from? Divine wisdom has been defined and we see it's pure, it's loving, it's impartial, it's non-hypocritical. And it's not hypocritical. All of that. And he has also told us now when there is envy, there is strife, there is ambition, there is all this. Don't lie that you are walking in the spirit. This is not the wisdom from above. Now listen, I want to give you another scripture. It's in the first book of Corinthians. Verse 30. Chapter 1, verse 30. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Choka kuboyo muri mu Kristo Yesu e yafuka amagezi jetuli okuveri katonda bwe butukirivu no kutukirizibwa no kununulibwa Hallelujah Amen Jesus is our wisdom Yesu ge magezi gaffe He has become our wisdom Yafuka amagezi gaffe and out of that ero kuva mwecho we get righteousness tufuna obutukirivu sanctification tutukuzibwa and redemption no kununulibwa Wow. Wow. Mm. Isn't this an area you and I need to focus on? Let me ask you to go with me to the book of Romans. Chapter 12. From verse 1. It says. Chapter 12. Verse 1. I beseech ye therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. No rich Aborogan and Bega, your Roxa Silaqua Catonda, Muenga Yemibrija Menga Sadak and Namuen to Kuvu, a Sang Sakatonda, Quequayo Quamoquas, Quequereza Quamme or Quomoyo. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Sote mwefana nyizanga ba mirembe jino. Na ye mchusi wengu roku zobu jebirozo bia mwe. Oku kakasibua, oku kakasibua, oku simi wakwa katonda, oku sanyusa, iru kwa mazima. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Nambi aleluya. How can we be transformed? Tunachusi watutia. By the renewing of the mind. Every other strategy doesn't work. Even if you determine I'm going to be holy, I determine I'm going to be holy. When the thought process that drives you does not change. It will not be any different. And when we renew our minds in him. Then we can clearly discern the will of God. The perfect will of God. And Jesus said. Yes, Not everybody who confesses Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before, let me ask you to go with me to the second book of Corinthians. Chapter 10. Now we are going to talk about spiritual warfare. Katino tugenda kuga kutaro oruomoyo. Verse four. Orunyiri wakuna. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 
and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Kubanga, if you are going to be a favor, you will tell us if you are a man, you will tell us Oluo kuwangule ebigo, noluo kuwangule ndo oza, na bulichintuye chikulu miveche kuru untaza, okusinga magiziga katonda. Eranga tuje mula bulichirozo chigondele kristo, eranga tuwete steso kuwala negwanga, kubuje mubona, bumuna agonde ranga dala. Now let me, let me call your attention, please give me your attention. Amasogoga take it. The weapons of our warfare. Ebiyo kuwa nisa biyo utalo rafi. Are mighty. Bia man. They are powerful. Bia man. And this is what they do. Biko labiti. They cast down strongholds. They cast down arguments. They bring down every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And they take thoughts captive and bring them to obedience in Jesus Christ. Wait a moment. Where do you find arguments? Show me by your hand. Where do you find arguments? Where do you find the knowledge of God? Where do you find thoughts? Hey, what does that tell you? The weapons of our warfare are focusing on the mind. That's where the first war is. I wrote a little book. It's called Battle of the Mind. Maybe before the end of the camp it will be here. Now, when, I, I don't know whether this is sinking inside of you. In others, the Lord is saying, don't waste time. Trying this and that and that and that. Fighting on this and this and this and this. Learn what to fight as a priority. Deal with your wisdom. Once that changes, the rest will follow. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we are here in this Africa, let us leave this place a transformed people. Even before you change your wisdom. But if you know this is what I'm going to focus upon, you have already started changing. Because you are no longer being distracted and de deceived. Now you understand where to focus. And I'm going to show you in a very quick, short, short while how to go about it. Now uh, we could go on talking about wisdom, but let us move now on to the third element of our message. The third element is what is the force behind this corrupt wisdom? Because if you are going to co fight corrupt wisdom, then you need to know what is the force behind corrupt wisdom. And when you discover that, then you focus on that force. Let us go back to where it all started. In heaven, with the rebellion of Lucifer. There is no devil who tempted Lucifer. <laughs> there is no devil, there is no demon, there is no tempter who Te, tempted Lucifer. How did he fall? The Bible says, Bible says we, we read in Ezekiel. God was telling Lucifer, You were perfect. You were the seal, the model of beauty. Everything that you needed was inside of you. Your music instruments were inside of you. Precious stones were inside of you. You were the anointed cherub. And you were the one covering. You are the top one of all. Why? Because I made you that. For my glory. 
but na ye you corrupted your wisdom amagezi gono gono nyesa because of your splendor orwechiti bwacho oh oh mm. you were you were what you are orichori for him kurulwe for his glory kurwechiti bwache but when your attention was taken off him na ye biruzo byamuvako unto yourself you were overwhelmed by how beautiful you are. How glorious you are. What splendor you can emit. And as, as long as you are overwhelmed by that, consumed by self-centeredness, you can no longer think like him. You start thinking as yourself. You start think, thinking of what you want. What you deserve. And we see later on. Once he was obsessed by who he is. He began to see that where God had put him is not good enough for him. Do you hear corrupt wisdom? Divine wisdom thinks like God thinks. Corrupt wisdom thinks differently from God. Lucifer thought, mm -mm. at this level, I am like the other angels. I'm at the same level. This is not good. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be here. I want to take my throne and lift it high above the stars. Of God. I think that's where I deserve to be. I want to sit and preside over the congregation of heaven. I want to be like the most high. Everybody say, I, 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 and mine. That's where it all starts. And you, you listen to people who are disgruntled in church. It's all about for me, I don't enjoy it. When that pastor preaches, oh, he powers me. Why does he preach? Hey. He bores you so therefore he should not preach. Yeah, because I don't enjoy him. I, 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 I. I, I. And that's where we get self-centeredness, self-will, self-gratification, self-exaltation, self-promotion, and all those things. Let us read the scripture. How are you fallen from heaven? O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. How are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened nations? For you have said in your heart, everybody say wisdom. In your heart, you have said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the, above the heights of the clouds and I will be the most like the most high. Hmm. You hear that? I, I, I. That spirit, sense of I is what we is called self. It is not Dependent on God, it is self-dependent. And once we sink in that mode, we can never fulfill the righteousness of God. 
Now, let, let me take you back. When Lucifer came to the woman, did God indeed say that you cannot eat of this fruit? The woman said, no. We can eat of all the fruits. But except the one in the middle. That one we don't eat. We don't touch. We don't touch lest we die. She was speaking depending on God. This is what God said. Why do you believe it? Because God said Why do you not eat? Because God said I should not. She, she was dependent on God. And Lucifer said You will not die. <laughs> but God knows that when you eat of it you will be like him in knowing good and evil. In other words you don't have to depend on him anymore. You can make your own decisions. You can decide what is right what is wrong what you want what you don't want what you'll do what you'll not do. What was Lucifer offering the woman? Self Dependence. And the woman accepted it. And she made her own decision. That tree is good for food. And it is good to bring wisdom. And in her own self will, she took the fruit and ate. And she also gave her husband. She is no longer operating dependent on God. She is now choosing her own way. Do you remember what Jesus said? He said the son can do nothing. Except he sees the father. And the son will say nothing except he hears the father. Jesus was not self dependent. He was dependent on the father. He says, even the works I'm doing, they are not mine, they are the works of the father. Brothers, self. Some, I said in the beginning the power Jesus was talking about that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you then you will be my witness. He was not just emphasizing or talking about power to work miracles as good as that is power to cast out demons as important as that is even power to raise the dead that one he had already given them you go to Matthew chapter 10 he said go and preach to preach that the kingdom of God is near. He will see, cast out demons, raise the dead. That one he had already given them. But there's something they did not have. When he was being arrested, they all fled and deserted him. Why? Self preservation. Are you with me? Because they wanted to preserve themselves. They were willing to run away. Peter, Peter denied him. And even cast when they said you are with him. Why? Self preservation. If you ask Peter, you betrayed the Lord. You say, no, 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 no. I love the Lord. The situation. I was trying to survive. How do you survive? Self preservation. I denied him to stay alive. I cast when they. Put my name together with his name. Tell somebody I hate self. Speak it as if as if you mean it. I hate it. self. Brother, self. 
will make you do something you know is not right but you, you, you think I have no choice when these men were filled with the power they stood before the Sanhedrin and they said he is the Lord you killed him but God raised him up we are the witnesses and when they were told, don't speak again in his name, they said, tell us, is it better for us to do your will or to obey God? They were different men. They were in their hearts to stand and show that he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, even preachers, miracle workers, devil chasers, are sometimes showing lifestyles around self. As long as self is not dead, even if you are working miracles, even if you are chasing demons. Let me tell you something. Can you still bear with me? Can you? One day, I was reading a book written by a very famous evangelist. And the, the title of that book is that thing. That thing. It was a small book. I read it in just in one sitting. But after reading it, I cried. This evangelist was saying in every one of us there is a nature. That nature is natural to us because that's what we were born with and that's what we grew with that's what we were educated to live like that's what our culture promotes everything we love in the world promotes it but that, that nature is of yourself and by the way Self-life is what the Bible calls the flesh. The carnal nature. The old man. The reason is it is called the old man. Because that is the nature we are born with. That's the nature we grow with. That's the nature we learn how to defend ourselves with. Even when, we, when they are training us in uh, business schools or what, they teach you to be aggressive, to push others out of the way. You, you need to know what you want and go for it. You are not responsible for the other man. We are told to be selfish. We are told to be self-gratifying. We are taught to adore ambition and self-promotion. And this man was saying, when we come to Jesus, we get regenerated in our spirits. We get a new life inside of us. But that's, that does not mean that everything of the old nature has died. We have to work on it. If we do not, something in that nature will one day bring us down. And then he began to give examples of different people he used mightily by God. But that thing, something, 
And when we, we are there, we know those things inside of us. When we go to pray, we confess them. And what shows us that our confession is not really working. We confess them in January, in February, in March, in May, and on and on and on. Why? Because they are not going. They are there. Bibao. We confessed them last year. Even the other year. Neguri. And we will confess them next year. No, and this preacher said, Mumburi Zagamba, Son of God, man of God, deal with that thing. Before it deals with you. And he gave an example. He said one day he was preaching in a crusade. And he, there were so many miracles. At the end of it, he stepped out so that he can go home. And he got to, they escorted him to his car. And he got in the car. And the ashes went back. But as he started his car. He saw a man. With a big jacket. Walking to his car. But he was staggering. He was drunken. And he came to the car. And he called him by name. And he looked at him and said, how do you know my name? Then suddenly, he realized, oh my God, this man was a preacher, a great evangelist. What happened? The guy was dirty, drunk, and said to him, help me with $10. And this preacher looked and began to cry. He says, oh God. He took a hundred dollar bill and gave it to him. And the other man was so happy. He says, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And so this preacher is saying, oh, that thing. That thing. If we don't deal with it, it doesn't matter whether you might a preacher. It doesn't matter whether you're a miracle worker. That thing. You remember what the Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For these two are fighting against each other. You cannot satisfy both. Quickly, there are two men I love to study. Both of them came from shepherd families. Both of them were chosen by God to become kings. Both of them were anointed by the same prophet. Both of them sinned against God. One was forgiven. The other was rejected. One was King Saul. If you read the story of King Saul, he was he started out a very handsome young man. Very courageous. A mighty fighter. Wonderful. But when he became king, that thing was exposed. One day, the Philistines were coming to attack Israel. And the people were shaken. And the prophet said to, jo to, to Saul, Go and prepare for three days. After three days, I will come and give a sacrifice on your behalf to God. After that, you will go and fight. The battle is yours. And the prophet went away. When the third day came, Saul expected the prophet to be there early in the morning. But when he did not see him, and he was so much in panic. Why? Because 
the, people, the, the Jews were getting scared. And we are beginning to desert the army. They were leaving him. Now do you see? Either he's God dependent or self dependent. If he was God dependent, he would say, But the Lord is on our side. He will give us the victory. But he was so scared that the people were leaving him. And he emboldened himself and gave the sacrifice. He did not wait for the prophet. As soon as he finished, the prophet arrived and said, what have you done? He said, oh, you see, you delayed. So I emboldened myself. I gave the sacrifice. And Samuel said, the Lord would have confirmed the kingdom in your hands and in your household. But now for what you have done, God is taking the kingdom away from you. He's giving it to somebody else. The next time, the same prophet comes to Saul. He says, thus says the Lord, go and attack the Amalekites. Don't spare anything. Not man, not goat, not animal, anything. Because of what they did. Saul goes. Saul again. He fights. Arwana. He overcomes them. Awangula. He comes back victorious. Adam but before he arrives, Ningatanatuka. God is feeling so bad. He goes to the prophet and says, Samuel. Again, I regret that I made Saul king. Goodness. Eh? God says, I regret. He says, He has turned away from following me. But when Samuel went to meet Saul, Samuel says, Oh, praise the Lord. I am back from the mission. It's been successful. And so Samuel says, What about the sound of cows I'm hearing in my ears? And the sound of sheep bleating in my ears. And what did Saul say? Oh, the people. Tell your neighbor, the people. What was the reason for his first failure? The people. What's the reason now? The people. They wanted to give a sacrifice to your God. Yeah, we have brought them the best ones. We have brought them to your God. <laughs> and God said, Samuel said, does God honor sacrifice more than obedience? Because you have rejected the word of the Lord. God has rejected you from being king. And Samuel turned to go. Samuel wachukira. And Saul, Saul held his garment. Na mkuate chizivau. He says, "Don't go." Na mkuato geenda. I have sinned against God and, I, and against you. Ni nani masoga katonda na wewe? But come with me. Let's go worship the Lord. Ndiyo angoto geenda fena tu sinzemu kama. But as he pulled, aba sika the garment tore. And the prophet said, As this garment has been torn, God has torn the kingdom from your hands. He has given it to another man. And Saul so said, Hey, wait now. I have sinned. But give me some respect before the people. Gamba, the people. Give me some respect. Come with me. Let's go worship. So Samuel went with him. But the Bible says that is the last time he ever went to him. God rejected Saul. But David. 
was also a man like others. When God chose him, he said, I found a man after my own heart. And David was, a, was full of worship. He loved God. Mighty warrior. He was a man of God. But the time came. It was a time of war. And he didn't feel like fighting. So he sent them to go fight. And he stayed home. And after waking up in the middle of the morning, he uh, slept in. So when he woke up, he goes out to feel the sunshine. And oh oh, mm -mm. he sees in the neighbor's home a beautiful woman naked, washing. I mean, she was bathing. And he looked. He could have looked away. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He could have looked away. There's something in him. Yes. Gamba nange, that thing. Gamba nange, that thing. That thing. There was a thing there. That was gratifying his lusts and desires. The Bible says, Bible gamba, he went and asked, Who is that woman? Baba, and the people said, eh. I don't remember exact words, but they said, she is the wife of Uriah, who is this, I mean, the son of so and so. And it was like, eh, king of Adichi. She is someone's wife. And he said, oh, okay, okay. Then he called others. Go and bring her to me. Say, I want to talk to her. What was driving him? Say that that thing. And that thing is where? And she came. The king has called you. And the, the rest of the story you know. Something happened. And, and you know, after, after that, the drive comes down. At first he was feeling, I can't do without her. But now, it's over, it's over. That's how it works. Unfortunately, a note comes from the woman. Take it to the king. Don't open it. The king gets it. Says, oh my God. The woman is pregnant. Oh. <laughs> and David. A man after God's heart. Decided, I'm going to solve this. Bring for me Uriah. In his mind, self dependent, he's going to solve it. In his corrupt wisdom. Bring Uriah. Uriah comes. He eats with him. Giving him wine. <laughs> drink some more, drink some more. After that he says, it's okay, you can go and sleep home. You can go and be with your wife. And the, womb, the man goes out but does not go to his home. He sleeps by the gate. That night, David must have slept very well. I have solved everything. <laughs> now nobody will ever know that I am the one responsible. 
But in the morning they told him Uriah slept by the gate. Oh no. He didn't go home. Tell him I'm inviting you for dinner again. Is that divine wisdom is using? That's corrupt wisdom. You may be a man of God. You may be a great one. But if we don't deal with corrupt wisdom, one day, that thing, that thing, he brought Uriah on the table. This time he gave him more drink, more drink, more drink. Okay, go home to your wife. The man went by the gate. I'm sure David slept in home. I, I hope he went home. The, the morning they said, uh, uh, the man slept here. So David said, okay. I have to do something different. Uriah, go back to the battlefield. But take this letter to your commander. And the letter said, put Uriah right where it is hottest. And leave him, don't, don't cover him. Unfortunately, Uriah was killed. I want you to imagine when they brought back his body. The morning, the crying, the widow is crying. Everybody is crying. After the funeral, after a few days, David says, I will help the widow. I will take care of the widow. And I'll take care of the unborn child. Because Uriah was a good man. Say with me, corrupt wisdom. Do you realize what we are talking about is happening in the church every day? It's in the church every day. It's among pastors, among believers, among all. That is not what it means to be a witness for Jesus. And soon the boy is born. And David tells everybody, I adapt him. He will be like my, my own child. And nobody suspected anything. Everything was solved. Everything was okay. Until one day, Nathan comes and says, King, there was a man who saw many sheep. But when he wanted to kill one. He went to his neighbor who had only one. Killed him and took his one sheep. And David said, what? He deserves to die. And Nathan says, that man is you. Do you know how you killed Uriah? And you took his wife? You had so many. God allowed you to have many wives. Why did you take that one? And David said, oh God, I have sinned against God. For the first time, everybody knew. Oh. Think about that day when everybody will know. Tell your neighbor, hey, some, one day some everybody may know. Tell your But let me finish with this. David Dawidi was forgiven by God. And he fasted that the boy would not die. But the boy died. To everybody, that was the end of the story. David was king again and everything. But to David, 
it was not the end. I'm sure every time he sat down, he would think, how did I get so low? How could I have done all of that? I, I hid it all in me. In other words, when you are sitting alone, you say, this thing may destroy me one day. This thing may destroy me one day. It's not enough to be forgiven. I must get rid of it. But how? David went into fasting and prayer. And he, he cried to God. And out of that fasting and prayer, he got his freedom. But we all, he also gives us a wonderful, wonderful prayer of repentance. And I want us to conclude today by just reading the words of this prayer. He says in Psalms 51 verse 1 Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak, and blameless when you judge. On sasile ayimu kama gwali no kwa galo kutagwawo. Oroku sasile kwa kunji nzija kebe no nobi yange bion na. Naza kwa butalibu tuwe kilivu wange. Ontukulize dalo kwa mchibichi yange. Ebe no nobi yange mbikiriza. Ere bibibi yange mbimanyi bulijo. Gwe njene gwe njene. Nenko le bitalibu ya butuwe kilivu maso gongo raba. Norwecho. Dio yogira bitufu. Era nensala yo eyo musango ya buwenkanya. Verse 5. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, you'll make me know wisdom. Dala dala nazali wa mchivi, kaso kedento nde wa mulubuto la mange, ndi mwono onyi. Oyagala mazimaga vira dala muti magwange, ompa magezi, munda mwonzi. Purge me with high soap, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. O ya gara mazma gafi ya dalam muti magwango, mpa magezi munda muunze. O naze ne ezobu, ntukule, o naze ntukule, no kusinga o mzira. Create me, create in me, a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. Totu nuli da bibibi yange. Ero osangu, osangule binono yange bionna. Ontonde mumu timo mulongo fai katonda. Ero nteke mumu moyo mulonji munda yange. Tongo ba wole. Ero tonzija kumoyo wa mtukuvu. Onko mezewe sangali obloko ziwo. Ero mpo mutimo gugonde da bio yagada. Ndiyo kenji giriza wano nyama kubogo. Na bakule bibi. Bakuchu kirenga. Bakume oji ole. Ondo kule mchibi. Ondokole mchibecho kwe uomu sai Ayi katonda Gwe katonda Uwobulo kozi wangu Ulimiru wangu Luna atende lizango Butu kirifu O Lord open my lips And my mouth Shall show forth your praise For you do not desire sacrifice Or else I would give it You do not delight in burnt offerings The sacrifices of God Are a broken spirit A broken and contrite heart 
These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness. With burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings, then shall they offer bulls on your altar. Aye mukame ya sami ya mimuaji yange naka mwaka angi kana kutendele zanga. Tosa nyukira sadaka nandi kulete de. Nebe uwa yebi okebua tobisa nyukira. Sadaka katonda jaya gara. Gwe muyo gutege do kusobia kwa guo. Omutima ugume nyesero gubonere de. Aye katonda togu gayenga. Okula kula nyesanyo nengabu osima. Yerusalem ya uchize kubugo wacho. Olioko sanyukira sadaka ya obutu ukirivu. Ebi uwa yebi okebua yebi kusanyusa. Yebi kusanyusa. Nente ziwe uwe yo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are concluding. And we have seen that if we are going to really stand as witnesses for Jesus, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says those who are led by the Spirit are the children of God. And we have seen that the, the grip, the tool the enemy uses to keep us in his power and captivity even when we know what is right is corrupt wisdom. Even if we have, we speak in tongues. If we do not deal with corrupt wisdom, we shall continue stumbling and falling. But corrupt wisdom operates from self-life. Self-centeredness. Self-love. Self-will. Self-gratification. Self-promotion and all kinds of things. And that's why Jesus said, if you do not die to yourself, you will lose your life. That's why the Bible tells us, mortify the flesh. Put, put to death the flesh. That thing which every one of us knows, it always comes and stumbles us. You remember the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, you have not fought unto blood, fighting with a sin that easily ensnares you. We are not saying we are not saved. We are saved. We have the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will not kill the flesh for us. It's us. And we saw David. Man with the heart after God. See how, how low he sank. Lasting after a woman. Taking someone else's wife. Trying to deceive. Then killing the husband. And hiding it. Secretly adapting the child and the wife, taking the wife. Deceiving everybody. He was a man after God. But he, he did all of that. You can do the same. I can do the same. If we don't deal with that thing, it will deal with us. Are you with me? David dealt with it. He went and cried to the Lord. And waited upon the Lord. And when he died, the Bible says he was laid to rest having fulfilled all God's purposes in his generation. What about you and I? Shall it be said of us when we rest that this man, this woman fulfilled all God's purposes in his generation? Because that thing is intended to stop us. 
So we want to come before the Lord and say to the Lord that thing. I want to get rid of that thing. Tomorrow we will be looking at how do we go about dealing with that thing. And how do we go about giving more control to the Holy Spirit in our lives that we may become witnesses, true witnesses of God. Amen. 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 I want you to raise your hand and say to God I thank you, my God, for you who began a good work in me will bring it to accomplishment. It is God who called me. It is God who will work.